Welcome to this episode of Manufacturing Talk Radio. I am Tim Grady. I'm sitting here with my co-host, Lou Ice. Lou, we're at the ISM conference in Nashville, Tennessee. ISM 2018, our fifth year. Yeah, it is the fifth year. And looking forward to going to Houston for our sixth year. Yes, Next yes. Year. That'll be a great trip, too. We're sitting here with Bill Danner, who's president of Credit Risk Monitor. If you folks are not familiar with Credit Risk Monitor, that's really the purpose of this interview. They provide some rather mission-critical information and kind of a forward look at where you might have a bump in the road that was unexpected that you could have known about months prior. Bill, welcome to Manufacturing Talk Radio. Well, thanks, Tim. I appreciate being here. It's nice, it's nice to talk to you guys. Good. Um, Thank you. We we're, you know, I'm fascinated by what Credit Risk Monitor does because it's looking forward in time to say, okay, who might be in trouble out there that's in your supply chain right. that you really haven't been aware of? Right. And you have some real-world examples of companies that have recently filed for bankruptcy sure, sure. that had people who used the Credit Risk Monitor service, which, by the way, I was surprised, is relatively inexpensive. It's we n- try to do that. Yeah, it's not an expensive product, but great information. They would have known months in advance, mm-hmm. you know, and, and told the collections people, lean on this one really hard. <laughs> Give right. us some examples of where companies could have gotten a heads up before companies that you know of have already filed for, for bankruptcy? Well, I think probably the most uh, uh, recent examples that uh, come to mind would be uh, companies like uh, Claire Stores, I Heart Media. Uh, some of the really big bankruptcies of, of, the, uh, of the year, I haven't written a, a whole list of them down, but uh, yeah, Remington Outdoor is yep. another one. Yep. Uh, you know, the, uh, that was actually uh, mentioned in a Wall Street Journal article uh, you know, I don't know if you saw it a, a day or so ago. The, the, apparently, Bank of America promised that they uh, they weren't going to lend to makers of those kinds of guns. Right. And now they're getting ready to do maybe a debtor in possession finance <laughs> for this company. Oh, okay. So that you know, we'll see how that works out for them. Okay. So, uh, but it's it's look, it's um, most public companies, which is our sweet spot. Okay. Most public companies, uh, when they head towards bankruptcy, it's like a train wreck in slow motion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's really uh, not hard to see the signs if you're really looking. Mm-hmm. And the problem, of course, is that there's so much information ava- available about these companies from so many different sources that pulling it together and making sense of it takes a lot of time. Right. Now, I was talking to my team last night. We have a booth over here in the show. And uh, I said, well, what have you learned so far from the people that you're talking to? And one of the things they mentioned that they thought was surprising was that a, a large number of the people they were talking to know they should be doing supplier financial stress analysis. And they just don't do it. Others of them do it only when they're onboarding a new supplier. Right. And so years can go by, and things can really change for a company over those years, (laughs) uh, and nobody's paying any attention to what's happening financially for the company. So we're here to kind of propose a better best practice, and that is monitor everybody. It's affordable. It's easy to do. You know, we have this 1 to 10 scale. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what what do you think about this, right? You give us a list of the companies that you're doing business with, the mm-hmm. major companies you're doing business with, and Lou, I'll give you a tap on the shoulder when it's time to pay attention to one of them. Mm-hmm. Easy mm-hmm. enough? Can't ask for it easy. <laughs> I mean, because I, I'm too busy doing what I do. Right. Right. And and so we give you the tap on the shoulder. Now it's time to do something. Now it's time to think about what your alternatives are. Now it's time to maybe talk to the CFO of the company that's uh, supplying mm-hmm. you. Uh, you know, all those things, depending on the particular circumstances that you would already know how to do. Right. But the first problem is awareness. And it turns out it's <clears throat> easy to solve that. One of the things you just mentioned a few moments ago was the fact that uh, you're, you're talking in terms of suppliers, mm-hmm. but this works just as well for potential customers. Oh, sure. Look, yeah. it's, it's the same job, right? Yeah, right. right? You're analyzing I just wanted a to clear it up for the... You're audience. analyzing a company's financials, and, and you know, most of my customers are on the credit side. Right. That's where we came from. But right. now, you know, about 30% of my sales are to uh, the supply side of the business, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, it's the fastest growing part of our company. 
So let me throw this at you. What's different between your organization and mm -hmm. an organization like uh, Dun & Bradstreet? Well, uh, you mean besides the uh, annual revenues? <laughs> well, we can talk about that if you wish. I wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest it. <laughs> We're, we're a much smaller company. We focus uh, very tightly on what we do best, which is this monitoring of uh, larger companies globally. We, we cover just about every public company in the world, and we cover you know tens of thousands of private companies as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know that's that's really a, a different expertise than what DNB has been doing all those years, where you know it's all about coverage. And I, I say this because I actually work at DNB in my in my career. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, look, DNB is a fine company. What they do is amazing, mm -hmm. uh, covering millions and millions of companies. But we we think we do what we do better. We've been using them, for example, for our metals business for years, but there, there are times that we find that there, there's, there's gaps and holes and rabbit holes and speed bumps right. where you don't get all of what you really need. Well, if you're working with scores that are mostly based on trade credit data, Mm -hmm. which is essential if you're analyzing companies and you don't have balance sheets and income statements and things like that, Right. Uh, then you're going to miss uh, failures of large public mm. companies because Kodak, for example, was paying its bills right up to the week before they filed for bankruptcy. And Kodak, by the way, is still paying its bills now they've come out of bankruptcy, mm -hmm. but Kodak is one of the companies that's in big trouble again. So, uh, you know, we may have a Chapter 22 there. Now, there's a chapter I haven't heard about. Oh, I heard 7, that. 11, well, 13, what's 22? Chapter 11 twice. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you set us up for that one. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know that that's definitely going to happen. Obviously, yeah. we're just, we're, they're on our watch list. So, uh, you, you know, uh, Kodak is, is uh, a fine brand. They may pull it out, but but they're definitely struggling. Right now. Yeah, yeah. Now, Bill, if I remember your service well, from some conversations that we've had with some of your folks, yep. is if I bring my list of uh, customers I'm doing business with and suppliers I'm doing business with, and you don't necessarily cover them all, right. you will research them all. Is that correct? Well, yes. So you you may uh, want to pick and choose where you. Uh, put that emphasis mm -hmm. in terms of you know suppliers that are you know not selling you F-type screws and you've got a lot of alternatives. Right. But if, for a strategic supplier, uh, look, uh, financial statements are the gold standard of credit analysis, mm -hmm. and and it's not all we use because we think it's important to use other sources of information, and we can get into that in just a minute. But starting with the financial statements is an important foundation for any kind of credit analysis, Tim, and. And so we'll go out and collect that information. We'll we'll standardize it. We'll process it. We'll score it. And so you get the benefit of a Frisk score, which is our flagship score, uh, ninety six percent accurate, uh, even on private companies. So okay. That's, that's that's quite feasible. So you have um, a service that's very different than a mass production shop like Dun and Brad. Um, is this a subscriber base? Oh, sure. And uh, can, do you do custom work where a company is involved in a potential transaction, a multi-million dollar transaction, and you know, we want uh, you and Jerry to jump on this and make sure that I'm dealing with the right Well, right it's folks. not a standard part of our service, mm -hmm. but it is often the case that we'll get a phone call from a customer who's just on the regular subscription service, and, mm -hmm. and we'll take the call. And we'll get into a conference room, and we'll get some some of our analysts involved, and we'll 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 dig a little, a little deeper mm -hmm. than we might normally just with the automated systems. We're right, absolutely. Right. Do you now? You look at public companies all around the world. Do you right. also look at private companies all around the world? Well, private company business is mostly North American and, and primarily U.S. Okay. Uh, we. Uh, 
have just collected more information about private companies sure. here in the U.S. because we get a lot of that information, which, as I said, was is trade data, right. trade payment information, uh, from our own subscriber base, and, and that's largely, it is global, but it's largely U.S., and so most of the data we're seeing flowing in is U.S., about 80% U.S., about 20% uh, non-U.S. data. Okay. I know that when uh, we're checking out credit uh, from our manufacturers and or suppliers. The information that we get, a lot of it has to do with, well, if I want to buy the company. Well, I don't want to buy the company. <laughs> All I want to know is, are they going to pay my bill? Right, right. You know? Well, the, and our score is, is, is calibrated that way. So, so if you look, for example, at one of the um, bond agency ratings, right, they make a very big distinction between, say, a double A and a single A and a triple B. These are all investment grade ratings. Right. Now, it does make a big difference if you're buying and selling securities, you know, obviously. Right. That's why they do it. Right. Right. But if you're just trying to evaluate a supplier, mm -hmm. they're the same. <laughs> they're all good. Right. <laughs> uh, but, you know, they, the coverage of uh, bond agency ratings is pretty limited. So we're covering uh, 40, 50,000 companies with our Frisk score, and they're collectively across all the bond agencies covering about 10 to 15,000 companies. So mm -hmm. uh, there's going to be a lot of gaps if mm -hmm. you try to rely just on, on, on uh, you know, the ratings. But we do use them as part of our Frisk score. Mm -hmm. We had a, an interesting event about two years ago, large company. Gold, gold company, mm -hmm. and um, we sold them uh, custom-made material. Right, and uh, it was well into the six-figure contract. Well, I'm not liking the story already. <laughs> and uh, we shipped the goods, and we, 60 days, uh, we're, we're supposed to get paid in 30. Right. Uh, 60 days, our CFO is calling the. CFO. I bet he was. Can't get him on the phone. Oh, not a good sign. That's a, that's the first signal, I would think, <laughs> in your world. And well, we hope not. I mean, I hope we tell you a long time before that. Uh, well, I would hope so. so that's already <laughs> too late. Uh, so to make a, a, a longer story short, um, they were a public company, uh -huh. and uh, we wound up having to call the New York Stock Exchange because wow. no one would get on the phone with us. No one. Wow. We called the New York Stock Exchange, uh, the compliance department, and we got paid within a week. Well, now that's an interesting collection strategy. You I bet. like that. You bet. <laughs> I, I have to take the credit. <laughs> it was, uh, and my CFO said, but they're not going to help you. I said, it's a phone call. Right. And we got paid in a week. Well, you know... Uh, and we deal with that company very differently today. I'll bet you do. Yeah. A little so, cash on the barrel head, is that what we're hearing? Not a little. <laughs> oh. And we're selling a product that they have ranked as sole source. Uh -huh. So we have no collection problem with them anymore. Well, but they see, do give our name out for credit references now. <laughs> <laughs> and we tell them they're cash in advance. <laughs> I don't know why that would help them very much. I can't imagine. Yeah. Why. All right. Bill, are there any companies that you can share with us today that are kind of got one wheel off the edge of the cliff? Well, I uh, wish I'd come prepared with a whole list. Uh, uh -oh. <laughs> there are uh, a lot. Uh, there are a lot still in the en energy industry. Mm. Uh, there, there are a lot uh, uh, in the retail industry. Uh, I, I think you may have heard the expression "the retail apocalypse," uh, <laughs> oh. which is which is making the rounds in the retail industry. Uh, it, it's uh, there's there's a there's a lot of. Uh, pain, anguish, and gnashing of teeth going on in, in, in these. Now, energy seems to be getting a little better, although their balance sheets look lousy because we've, we've got better than $70 oil. Love it. And, you know, uh, as long as that st sticks, the, the probably energy is probably a story that's behind us. Uh, but, you know, in, in any industry, uh, there are great companies financially and not so great. So going right. back to retail for a minute... Look at Walmart. Look at Costco. These guys have fortress balance sheets. They're in great financial shape. But, you know, not everybody else is. 
Right. And then you could look at uh, at energy, and and you know there are, there are some very strong companies in the energy business. Well, we'll see what happens to the uh, uh, the Trump tariffs and how that's going to affect. Well, that's a big big question. I, you know, I, Do you have answers? Uh, well, of course not. I mean, I don't think anybody knows quite what's happening next. I don't think the, uh, wait, the well, Chinese let's wait, know. Let's and, wait two, three minutes. Well, but, uh, but will we know that? Well, then you'd have to wait another two, okay. three minutes. All right. So I think there's a lot of uncertainty, and that's obviously a problem for everybody. Nobody likes uncertainty, and, and uh, it's, uh, it's absolutely absolutely a problem and and we see that again going back to my first score we see that in the volatility of stock uh, capitalization you know and and that's one of the elements of the first score and so you know volatility is not good you know high volatility means higher risk and it's true right. for the financial standing of companies but no. i should tell you also about our, our credit uh our crowdsourcing we, we have, uh, I don't know if Jerry got into this uh, uh, last year, but... I don't recall. But... Uh, I don't think so. We're uh, doing this innovative new thing where we're looking at the click stream of our customers using our website. And by looking at the pattern in the way that the website's being used, it shows when my customers are worried. Now, these guys aren't worried about regulation FD. They can ask a financial executive in, in one of their companies they're doing business with anything they want. Uh, they have lots of sources of information besides us. Uh, we're delighted they're using us, of course, but, you know, let's face it, they, they know a lot. Right. And, and so the way they use the service is going to be indicative of what they read there, but it's also indicative of what they brought to the table when they're looking. Mm. We could use this clickstream score as a credit score, all by itself, with no other information, no financials, no stock information, nothing else, it would work. How many people are checking them out? Well, it's not actually the number. It's the pattern. We have a very structured website. Mm -hmm. If they come in, they do a quick look, and they're gone, no worries. Right. If they do a deep dive, and particular pattern of deep dive, then we're saying, okay, this guy knows something, he's looking for something right. in the financials that, that he thinks is there, this is worry. And so <clears throat> we have incorporated that. It makes our score a little more accurate in terms of catching companies that might fail. But even more importantly, it packs the companies that are really in trouble down to those bottom one and two scores mm -hmm. so when you look at the score you it's less of a false alarm and, and in the last few years 50% uh, of the companies in the US that went bankrupt 50% of the public companies had a one score the lowest score 50% of them and 60% plus had a one or a two so we're packing a lot of information yeah. into the bottom of that score is this similar in concept to uh, credit card companies, that when a lot of people are checking out a personal credit score, that the more you have people checking, the lower your ranking? Well, it, it's, uh, it's, it's actually a different mechanism, we mm -hmm. think. So with the credit card companies, and I, I used to be in the credit card business years and years ago, when I was a GE. Right. Uh, so, you know, with a credit card case, it's evidence that you're opening up more and more lines of credit. Mm -hmm. So, as you're borrowing more, that makes you a weaker credit, and that's why your credit score goes mm -hmm. down, right? Mm -hmm. So, that's that's where that comes from. In this case, it isn't that the company's borrowing more, it's that our users have heard stuff from their sales force, from mm -hmm. their peers in other companies in their same industry. Because, you know, the credit managers are trading notes all the time. Sure. And so it, it's actually just evidence of, of more information that's not public that gets put into the score. And, mm -hmm. and so it's, it's a very different way that it works. How many clients do you have? Well, we don't disclose that number, but Sorry. thousands is the answer. Okay. And uh, and you know, and they're pretty active on the website most of them. So we, we get we get a fair amount of data, and we won't use the crowdsourcing unless we have an adequate number of, of users. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't want to base it on just a few people because you know that wouldn't work very well. Right.
Do you have Do you have any liability in this? Well, everybody uh, is signed off. Everybody knows that they're doing it. Uh, that we're doing it. We're doing it for their benefit. From the credit manager's perspective, this is like a giant industry trade credit <coughs> group. You know, where they're exchanging notes, except they don't have to do anything. Right. They don't fly anywhere. They don't have to actually bring any notes. They don't have to do anything. They just come and look at the score on the website and they get the benefit of that. I'm, I'm tempted to ask the question. How much? But I, but I won't. <laughs> I'll, I'll ask you off mic. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's, I can guarantee you this because I've seen their pricing model. Yeah. It's less than the hit you'll take if one of your companies goes BK on you. <laughs> we, we once did an analysis, Lou, yeah. that showed that, that uh, if you had one significant financial loss because of a bankruptcy right. and it happened you know once every 50 years you'd come out ahead oh my god <laughs> <laughs> wow that's amazing bill i'm so. just curious because you've talked about a number of different things some new to us in this interview yeah and one of the experiences lou and i always have with our suppliers is when were you going to tell us you did that? Okay. Because they do so much that we're used. We find out we're using them for this much, but they can provide us this much, hmm. and we never knew it. Okay. So I'm guessing the credit risk monitor does a lot of other things. Well, we have a, a new product we come out with, and I'm pretty sure most when of my customers know about. When were you going to about. tell us? <laughs> well, I'm waiting for we're already uh, 20 minutes into the show. Well, the, the new product is mostly about private companies. We call uh -huh. it the Pace Score. It uses the trade data that we talked about a few minutes ago. Uh, it's not as accurate as the Frisk. So, mm -hmm. so in the hierarchy, you you really want a Frisk Score. Uh, on a private company, you can get a Frisk Score if we can get the financial statements for you. Right. Uh, and then, if that's not feasible, then we have a PACE score, which will give you a pretty good indication. It's, mm -hmm. it's uh, just based on uh, federal tax liens and the trade data, but it uses artificial intelligence technologies using this deep learning, this neural network deep learning right. as a way of enhancing the accuracy of the score, uh, just a fundamentally better model for mm -hmm. analyzing patterns. And so, uh, we're, you know, we're pretty excited about it, but, but you know, want to be very clear, the Frisk score is what you want, if you can get it, and the PACE score, you know, we're covering right now with PACE about 80,000 U.S. public companies, and we'll expand out from there, but, mm -hmm. but we made a business decision not to run a score when we didn't have enough information to give you an accurate score. Mm -hmm. So, we, you know, the coverage isn't as broad as, for right. example, a DMV right. or an Experian. But it's uh, it's a very accurate score for, for what it is with, without the financial statements. For our audience, do you want to tell them how to get in touch with the company, website? Well, well sure. We're at uh, www.creditriskmonitor.com, and uh, you know uh, we it's very easy to get in touch with us. We're, we're not hard to. Reach. You deal with people all over the country, all over the world. We have, we, have, uh, we have users in 130 com countries. Wow. So, yeah, all over the world. Bill, how often is your, and I'm assuming this is running on a very large database. Oh, yes. How often updated? Just uh, constant? Constant? Pretty much constantly. Uh, we would say daily because a lot of the files come to us once a day. Right, okay. Uh, but uh, and we recalculate our scores every day, so that, that keeps them fresh and means that the alerts are a lot more timely than, for example, if you were just doing it once a quarter or once a year. And that's why we, you know, getting back to the monitoring thing, that's why we think everybody ought to be just monitoring their suppliers. And just, you know, you want to wait for that email or that report that says, hey, Tim, time to pay attention to this company. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's just a, such a e much easier way of managing this, this, uh, this very specific issue. As part of your service, do you have um, a capability that, let's say, a client gives you a list of a hundred either customers or uh, suppliers and say, you know, I, I don't want to have to check on this. I'm going to give you these names. Right. And when there's an alert, just tell me about it. Alert right. me. 
And that, that, is that what you That's do? a standard part of the service. Oh, that? Oh, yeah. In that, fact, in fact, great. you can send us a list, and we'll process it for you and get them into your portfolio so that you're monitoring those. Okay. And we encourage people to send us a new list at least once a year because these things are changing. Right. And, of course, you can go on the website and you can add a company or delete a company from your list if, if you mm -hmm. want to. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, we, we have an excellent customer service team, and, and uh, they'd be you know, more than happy to help you out setting those things up. And do they track down, Bill, all of the, uh, either the subsidiaries or the other offices? Because I know sometimes we deal with a company and they're in this location, but, oh, by the way, they're in that location, that location, that location, and that location. Right. And we're only looking here. Right. Well, we, we uh, because we are public company oriented, and because public companies tend to manage the group as a group, uh, okay. we will take in the information, for example, from your list, and we'll match it and get you to the parent. And then we'll monitor the parent for you. Mm. Because... It turns out, we've done some studies on this, and it turns out it's, a, it, it's a, an exceptional event, a rare event, that a public company group will allow any part of the company to fail without the whole thing, without the whole house of cards coming down. Mm -hmm. Really? And, yeah, oh, re yes, and in, in fact, it's so unusual that the exceptions make a lot of news. So the, mm. the latest really big one was Target Canada, mm. and, and that was allowed to go... Uh, belly up without Target U.S. failing, uh, but it's, it's, they would rather sell the division, obviously, right. than have it fail. Right. So, you know, they're, it, you, you, we, we monitor at the, at, the, at, the, at the top level, and, and also because that's where the financials are. You know, you're normally the financials of a division are not easily available. Okay. Wholly owned subsidiaries having their own financials? Well, if, if if they're publishing the financials, we will report on them and we will score. Them. Okay. Right. So sometimes, like you have uh, American Airlines and you have the holding company AMR, and we'll track those both. Okay. Fascinating service. I can't wait to get offline so we can find out <laughs> yeah, what this right. service costs. <laughs> <laughs> we could use it. Yes, we well, could. God, we're delighted to set you up. That's we could great use news. It. Yeah. Good. Well, Bill, thanks for being with us. We appreciate yeah. it. Thank you for having me on. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for being on our show. That wraps up this episode of Manufacturing Talk Radio with Bill Danner. 